describing what is what are snaplets, what we call uh, snaplets. And snaplets in general are a set of modules or pieces of set of modules, each of which provide plug and play full stack solution to a common use case in a Vaadin application. And being plug and play means that each snaplet can be added to a Vaadin flow application requiring almost no uh, application specific code because these snaplets address recurring uh, use cases, recurring the need for specific functionalities. They are designed in a way that they would require minimal, uh, minimal coding and adjustment. And on the other hand, being full stack means that these modules include both the UI and the backend logic required to enable certain application functionalities. So for example, there are concepts for having things like user management, uh, uh, snaplet, activity log, snaplet, dynamic menu, snaplet, internationalization management, snaplets, and others as well. But the one that we are starting with and that we have developed and that we are presenting to you today is the user manager snaplet. And, but just to emphasize that the user manager snaplet is just a subset of a larger set of potential plug and playable uh, solutions that would address uh, common use cases in, uh, in Vaadin flow applications. So specifically, more specifically, the user manager snaplet is again also because it's snaplet, it's a plug and play solution and it's full stack solution for Vaadin flow applications. And it specifically enables teams to quickly enable user and role management, authentication management and authorization management. And uh, when it comes to user and role management, this basically means that it the snaplet, the user manager snaplet enables admins to the administrators of the application at runtime to enables them to add, edit and delete uh, users and user group, groups and roles. And when it comes to authentication management, this basically means that it adds a login screen and, and a couple of other uh, screens for uh, controlling and, 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 and uh, ensuring that the credential, user credentials are securely uh, stored. And authorization management, of course, and this uh, uh, enables administrators to at runtime to determine which users or user groups or roles can access which views. And again, being plug and play means that it requires very minimal amount of configuration. So the UI and the underlying functionalities of the user manager snaplet are working out of the box. So with minimal number of lines of code, if at all, you can get something similar to what you're seeing now. And we will see in them on a moment what these things will go through, many of these things in a bit more detail. But the point is that you can get uh, uh, a UI, a functioning UI, because the snaplet includes both the UI and the underlying backend functionality necessary. And as well, of course, maybe you can start by saying already that the backend uh, part of the snaplet can also be adjusted and all of this is adjustable and customizable uh, to meet your needs. And as I mentioned, the snaplet, the user manager snaplet enable in the first place user and role management and that means that if you have like screens and the underlying logic necessary to enable the application administrators to add, edit, delete, and enable and disable users as well, and user groups and roles. And also related to user and role management, it, it, the, the user manager snaplet has already pre-built uh, functionalities to enable the creation of registration links by which users, the end users of the application, or uh, can uh, enable, uh, can register themselves. It also, the user manager snaplet also uh, enables uh, authentication management. And basically that means that it automatically adds uh, or almost automatically adds login screen and a password reset screen. But importantly, and to my mind, one of the key advantages of, uh, of the user manager snaplet is authorization management. And that is the mechanism by which administrators, application administrators can control whether a user, a user group or a role can access views uh, at run, so and, and enable them to do this at runtime without the need to involve the development team and redeploying into production or anything like that. That's a very brief overview, the main elements of the user manager snaplet. And with that, I give the mic to uh, Martin who will demo the 
those many of those capabilities and more as well. The mic is yours, Martin. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> thanks, Tarek. Well, I will share my screen. Okay, well, first of all, I would like to thank everyone for joining today. We are excited to tell you about this new product that we believe will simplify your development efforts. So, yeah, um, my idea is to show you this project that I created on start.badin.com. Uh, just a reminder that uh, you can create your own application, your own kickstart, your own skeleton for new applications in there. And it's awesome. You can do many things. Uh, what I did was to create this project that contains some simulated views to represent what it would be an application for handling projects. Uh, of course, uh, the documentation will contain a section explaining how to do what I did here, starting from a blank project and then integrating the, the snaplet. Uh, I also played around with theming to demonstrate that the snaplet is not using any predefined styles. It just uh, uses plain Lumo to allow the usage of custom themes. So what you're going to see right now is a theme that I created in startupbuying.com. You can create your own themes in there and it's really easy. Uh, well, the first thing that I would like to show you is this. Budding already offers an excellent login component that allows you to create login views. But there is still some coding that you need to do in order to actually create a login view based on it. So user manager provides a base implementation. If you don't want to spend your time doing it by yourself, it's already implemented with internationalization in mind, and it contains the remember me checkbox working out of the box. It will also handle the errors produced by the login process. Uh, for example, I will try to log in with an non-existent user, and you can see that there is an error in here. Uh, it's also ready to be extended and customized if you want to add other things. So, well, after I log in into the application, like I said, uh, it contains several views that I created directly on startupbuying.com. Uh, basically, a dashboard, then uh, a view for showing some project, customers, tasks, and uh, a view for showing some discussions. It, it doesn't matter, it's just some simulations. Uh, but the interesting part is, I, is that I created uh, a submenu in here that will show all of the views uh, that are provided with user manager. So we will start with the first one, uh, users. This is like the main feature. Uh, it is a view for handling the users on your application. As you can see, it contains a filter area where you can narrow the search of the user. For example, I can enter something and it will filter. Um, then there is a grid with the users showing some information about them. Uh, but let's try to create a new one. Uh, when creating a, a new user, the most important thing that you need to enter, of course, is the username. I will enter something in here. Um, then you can also select the roles. I could try, for example, to select member role. We're going to see uh, exactly what is a role in a few minutes. So you have a UI to add groups and roles. Also, we're going to see about groups in a minute. And then there is a summary section that shows the views that can be accessed based on the roles that I assigned to this user. But I guess that you already noticed that there is no field for entering the password. Uh, we handle that with registration links. Uh, so after you create the user, you're going to see this pop-up with a button that you can click and a pop-up will, will appear uh, containing uh, some, some information that you can enter. For example, you can enter the amount of days that 
this link will be available after it expires. Uh, if you click on save and copy link, it will copy uh, the link to the clipboard so you can share it if you want to send it via Slack or on email or whatever. So when you share the link and you paste it uh, on your machine, uh, on the browser, sorry, it will appear, it will show this view. This view is also provided by user manager and it allows you to enter something, uh, to enter the password to finish the registration. As you can see, the username is fixed because we already entered it, it but I can try to enter something. As, as you can see, while I'm writing the password, it is already checking uh, some validation rules. We are using an open source library uh, that allows to customize the rules, but we already added some predefined rules that we think that are standards nowadays. And I can enter the confirm password, so the registration it's, it is already finished. So after the registration ended, I can log in with this new user. And as you can see, I only see a subset of the views that I had before, and that is because the roles that I assigned. But let's go back and sing in again using the administrator account. And let's talk about roles. Um, then uh, this is also a, an interesting feature. This is the roles manager. This view allows you to handle the roles. It has the same layout as the previous one. So you have a filter area in here where you can, of course, uh, filter uh, the roles. But, uh, and you also have a grid uh, where you have uh, some information about them. But let's try to create a new role. When you create a new role, it will ask you simply the role name. That is a string. I'm going to create one. And this, in this is interesting because it will show you that uh, you can also create a registration link for a role. Why is that? Because uh, it allows you to share that link so new users can register themselves with it and they will have this specific role assigned by default after they do that. This is handy, so you don't need to do that after they supply a password, like in the first view. So it will some kind like predefine the roles of new users. So, well, now you say, okay, I have the roles, I have the users, but what can I do with the roles? You can use them in your code, as you probably already do with the roles allowed annotation. Uh, but there is a new feature offered by user manager that might be of your interest. This is called the rules manager. This view allows you to map the views within your application with the roles that you've just created. As you can see, you have a similar layout uh, to the one shown before, you have a filter area that allows to narrow the search for rules. Then in the grid, you can see each of the created rules with some information about them. But let's try to create one rule to understand how they work. I'm going to click this button. Uh, when you hit the new role button, you will see three multi-select combo boxes. The first one, this one, uh, will automatically list all of the views of your application. You can select some of them, right? Uh, and then you can also select the roles. You have two options right now. Select the roles that you need to have in order to have access to the views, or the roles that you are not allowed to have in order to have access to them. So this, as you can see, you have some roles in here. Uh, this helps to create complex rules depending on your needs, but at the same time, it makes it easier to create simple rules. Um, then, if you click in here, you have an advanced way of defining the rules if that is not enough. Uh, so this makes things easier to handle when you have a big application. 
and you have many views. So instead of selecting the views one by one, you can say that if the URL of the, of the view, this is the part of the URL, you can say that, for example, if the rule starts with a given text pattern, then you will need those rows in order to have access to them. And you can have other kinds of rules. For example, if the URL ends with a specific text pattern, if it contains something in the middle, or you can even use a regular expression to uh, select the specific views that you want to uh, restrict the access. So, given that uh, you have many rules that you could have many rules that target the same view in different ways, you can also specify the order. Uh, the order is this column, and you can change it by uh, dragging and dropping in the grid, or you can also edit and change it in here. Uh, so well, uh, the problem uh, with this approach, of course, is that uh, you have to remember, uh, sorry, before going to that, to summarize, you can create users, you can create roles, and then you can assign roles to a given user, and then you can define a rule to protect the views so they can only be accessed by users with a given role. We are fine at this point. But the problem with this approach is that you have to remember a list of roles that you need to supply to a given user depending on the things that they need to do. So this is when the concept of groups might be handy. Uh, a group is a mapping between users and roles. As you can see, the group list view will show the available groups. And like the rest of the views, you can introduce filters to narrow the search of the groups. But if you create the new group button, you can enter a name. And then you will have, uh, you can select roles and assign them to users, uh, to groups, sorry. And then you can also select a user for that group, right? Uh, so as you can see, this makes things easier because you don't need to remember all of these roles. You just need to remember the group's name. So well, now that we have everything up, oh, sorry, one extra thing that I wanted to show you is that when you create a group, you can also create a registration link for the group in the same manner as we saw for the roles. You can share the registration link and this will allow new users to automatically belong to this new group. So, well, I will delete this last group that I created. But now that we have everything in place, let's see how the access restrictions work. As you can see, I created, I, I also going to delete this last role. I created uh, four roles. Uh, one is called administrator, leader, manager, and member, right? And now if you go to the rules, you can see that I created four rules. The first one, it tells that uh, you are protecting the task view, this one, and the discussions view, and you need to have the member role in order to see them. Then I created another one that is protecting the reports uh, and the dashboard view, and you need uh, the leader role in order to see them. And then another one called projects view, uh, sorry, another one that will protect the projects view. So you have to be a manager in order to see it. And then a last one called administrator that will protect all of the views of the user manager. So after I created this, uh, these rules, what I did was, was to create four groups. The first one is member. And the only role that I added is member, right? This is a simple group. But then you have the leaders group that it already contains the leader and the member. So a leader is at the same time a member. And something similar happened with managers. A manager is a member, a leader, 
and also uh, a manager. So as you can see, it has more access to more views. And finally, the administrators, as you can see, it contains all of the roles that I created. So the administrator have more power. That's why they can see all of the views. So I could try to log in with a member. As you can see the member, they only have access to a few of the things. And if I go out and sync with another one, you can see they have even more access. There is one view called customers that I didn't include in the rules. And I wanted to show you why. This is because there is also another view that is provided by a user manager Snaplet that it's called the views view. This view will show all of the views of your application. And by clicking on them, you can see the necessary roles that you need to have in order to have access to this view. And if I go to the customer's view, you can see that there is a restriction in here that you need to have the manager role in order to see it. But there is a tooltip telling that this restriction of this role is specified in the code. This is because this is used using the roles allowed uh, annotation. So this is good because you can use both approaches. If you want to define the restrictions on your code, as you were doing before using the manager, user manager snaplet, you can continue doing that, but at the same time, you can also uh, use these rules so you can change the access on runtime uh, with an administrator. And you can even do that uh, with a pattern. And the good thing about that is that you don't need to remember to add the roles uh, allow with annotation on new views. Depending on the URL, they are going to be automatically placed in there. So well, finally, there is also a change password view that is included in the user manager that allows you to change your own password in the same manner as we saw earlier when you were trying to register yourself. It will use the same restrictions, but then the users can handle their own credential by themselves. So well, this is interesting. We saw a lot of things. Uh, we don't have too much time, but I would like to show you some, some code. Uh, let me share my IDE. Uh, the idea is, of course, that there, like I said before, there will be a getting started section explaining what I did in here, but we can quickly go over the changes that I had to make with this project that I downloaded from startupbuddy.com to make the user manager snaplet to work. First of all, in the POM XML file, I had to add some dependencies. Snaplets are made, made up by a fine-grained set of maybe modules. So it can be used with different architectural styles. Uh, here, as you can see, you have to add these three dependencies. The first one will handle everything related to persisting the data on your database. Then there is another dependency for handling the business logic of the snaplet. And finally, another one that contains all of the views, all of the UIs of the snaplet. So well, uh, given that this is a Spring Boot project, I had to modify the main application class in here. Uh, the modifications are not too much. I have to add a couple of annotations to tell Spring and Balling to search for the beans and the views that are provided within uh, the snaplet. And I also had to configure the layout because as you saw, uh, these views, for example, contains a side menu and that side menu is defined on the main layout of your application. So you can, with one line of code, tell the user manager snaplet to use uh, that layout. Then, of course, given that we are dealing uh, with uh, 
security, and we are integrated with Spring Security, you have to add some uh, minor modifications in there. Uh, one of the things that you have to do is to add uh, the Remember Me services for uh, handling the persistent logins, and then also to add this method to configure the authentication failure handler to translate the exception thrown by the user detail service so they can be shown in the login view. And then another thing that I had to modify is this uh, authenticated user class that is provided by start.badin.com. This class is basically a helper utility that will tell you that a given user, uh, you can have a reference of the user that is logged in. So I have to modify it because it is using a user class that is part of the Kickstart project. And I have to replace it to use uh, the class, the user DTO that is provided by the Snaplet. Then, of course, I have to modify the main layout basically to add these menu items that you saw before. Uh, each of these items that were in, in the security section. Uh, so basically I'm telling that if you click on a user's link, it will show, it will display the user's list view. Uh, if you create an application on startupbuddy.com, it will already offer you a login view. So what I did was to replace it with a user manager login view, the login view that we already provide. And as you can see, I had to delete all of the lines of code uh, that it contained previously. So this gives you the idea that it, this is lowering the amount of code of your application because we are uh, delegating all of that to the login view. But at the same time, you can uh, overwrite some methods so you can customize it with your needs. And then, in the application.properties, there are some modifications in there, of course. One of them is, for example, adding a white listed package because we are using some add-ons. And uh, we have to tell Spring JPA to automatically create uh, the tables. And I also, uh, I'm also providing the internationalization uh, provider uh, because the Snaplet provides a base uh, IATM provider. And I'm telling that I'm supporting two languages. And this is, in fact, another modification that I did to show you what things that you can do. I created a new translation. So if I can show you, because I have another browser in here, Firefox. And if I try to log in, you are going to see that this is in Spanish. Uh, and if I go to, for example, the user's view, you're going to see that it is completely in Spanish. This is because uh, the views are already made with internationalization in mind. So, well, one last thing that I would like to show you uh, is the data model, because like I told you before, this is, this is full stack. This will create some tables on your database. Uh, these are the tables, basically, a table for studying the users. They have a prefix, so yeah, you can distinguish them from the rest of your tables. And we will provide a mechanism to change the name if you want to use different name scheme. Uh, for example, you have a table for studying the persistent login, the tokens that you need to use in order to login when clicking the Remember Me. Then you have tables for studying the groups and roles and all of the relationship, then a table for storing the registration links because they are persistent. And then these tables will hold the data regarding the rules uh, technology that uh, we presented, I presented before. So, well, thanks for listening. That was a lot of information, but uh, rest assured that all of this will be correctly uh, documented on the site so you can start playing around soon. Thank you, Martin. And if um, 
if you want, like there's a couple of questions a bit more technical about the, about the snapshot, and there are others that we can address in the end of the presentation. But uh, someone was asking, is Open Policy Asian supported? Does user manager snapshot support Open Policy Asian, which I wasn't familiar with? To be honest. Uh, yeah, to be honest, uh, I, I have to familiarize also with that topic. Maybe it is covered indirect, indirectly because we are using a lot of technology behind the scene. And the idea is that, like the rest of the products uh, of Vadim, the, the rest of Vadim products, we are going. We want the community to be engaged. Uh, we want everyone to start creating issues so we can start discussing and we can together steer the direction of of the snaplet because there are a lot of things that we, we would like to to implement in the future i think the there is a nice roadmap that we can define together uh, and all of these things we we can address them uh, with these uh, public issues right but one of the things that you are going probably to mention direct i want to go ahead is for example an integration with sso sso kit that will be really interesting because I think we think that this is complementary if you want to use, for example, an external uh, authentication provider. Yeah. And that's actually the second question that came as well. Can an external authentication service work with exactly. a user manager? Snap it. Yeah. Yes, all of these features that I presented, they are optional. For example, if you want, you would like you can start just by handling the users and the roles can be predefined on the database and you don't not, you don't want to give the ability to an administrator to create roles and groups you can handle them by yourself or the other way around you could leverage the users handling with something external like Keycloak, but at the same time control the roles and groups internally in your application so one of the things that we definitely are going to do is to create uh, a tutorial explaining how to integrate with an external provider. Probably uh, the best would be to use SSO Kit because it will already handle all of the complexities of that. But yes, it, it is highly customizable. That's the main idea. Yeah. And, uh, and to clarify, also there was a question about how you generated the templates. Like, those are like from start.vaden.com. Uh, not yeah. the user manager snapshot itself, but the template, like, yeah, the other things like the dashboard and projects and customers that you have now in the, yes. the menu. You, you, yeah. can, uh, you can create an application on startupbinding.com. It's just a matter of adding uh, something there. Uh, there are a lot of views. So, yes, I really encourage you to go there and try it. It's awesome. Yeah. All right, and uh, one final technical question, and there are other questions as well, like a bit more general, perhaps that we will cover at the end of the presentation. But uh, what is which database are you is uh, is used? Well, uh, right now in this demo that I show you, I'm using H2, but of course, the idea is to support all of the major databases. We are leveraging everything on JPA. So it's not going to be a big issue, but gradually the idea, because one thing is that, of course, there is a team beside, uh, behind the development of, of this uh, snaplet. And one of the things that we have is uh, full coverage with uh, integration tests. And the idea will be to set up different servers with different databases and periodically run these integration tests to be completely sure that uh, the databases are correctly supported. That's on mm -hmm. our roadmap, but it, it should work. We tested also with MariaDB, with Postgre, and it is working fine. So it's not yeah. a big deal. Yeah, all right. And there's uh, two two final technical questions. Uh, the scripts for Liquibase, can we get the script used with Liquibase? And I think the answer is yes. Uh, yeah, the, the idea is not try to, to uh, invade that area on your application. If you are using liquid base, uh, then you can use it. It's just adding several uh, new features to that, and then you can include it and create it by yourself. But of course, we will provide all of the scripts for creating the database. 
Right now, the tables are being created automatically uh, by Spring, by JPA, uh, automatic uh, data definition language. Uh, but of course, we will provide, we will provide uh, the scripts for creating the blank database so you can include it on your liquid base uh, configuration. All right, and there's many other questions and, and we hope that to find the time as well to, to address those, but uh, many of the questions actually are related to how to start using it, compatibility and the price as well. So, and those are the parts of, uh, of the rest of the presentation. Thank you, Martin, for, for this demo. And uh, yeah, so to answer some of the questions that came through the chat, uh, first, uh, this is a scheduled, the, the user manager snapshot is scheduled to be soon. We will have an alpha that everyone can use, an alpha release that everyone can use, but the, the general availability release is scheduled to be released in November 2023, and that will be uh, compatible, the first version, with uh, Vaadin 24.2. We can also later consider uh, backporting the support to other Vaadin versions 23 and possibly 14 as well. Uh, this is uh, snaplets, the user manager snaplet uh, and all the other snaplets that we are going to develop are developed in partnership with, uh, with Flow and Code uh, with, from where Martin is, uh, is the CEO of Flow and Code. However, uh, as far as you as the end user of those snaplets, uh, this is another Vaadin product with the same level of quality and, and support offered by any other Vaadin product. And this means that, and being a Vaadin product with the same quality means that support and maintenance covers the same, uh, similar to any other Vaadin product. Uh, the documentation will be available on the Vaadin documentation website with the same level of quality and, and comprehensiveness as any other Vaadin uh, technologies and products. And also the release cadence will follow the same release schedule and policy as any other uh, Vaadin, uh, Vaadin technology as well. And then the, the more interesting part, because about the pricing and packaging, is this free, does it cost money and how much and so on. So the answer is yes to both, yes. So there is a free version. Uh, it's, it's, uh, so there are two versions of the user manager snaplet. Uh, there is a free version for limited usage and there is a commercial uh, version or a version that requires a commercial license or uh, uh, an additional fee. And this is the unlimited usage version. And for the free version, it is available for up to five end users per applications. So you can use this without having any subscription or without paying anything and enabling the addition and also like all, all, all the functionalities of the user manager snaplet are available for up to five end users. And there is the unlimited version, which would require a commercial subscription. And uh, this one is available included in the highest subscription tier uh, in the Vaadin commercial uh, pricing, uh, commercial subscriptions. That's the ultimate, so-called ultimate subscription tier. And this is included with, yeah. So the unlimited version is included with Vaadin Ultimate, uh, but also uh, uh, for pro and prime subscri uh, subscription tiers, the, it is possible to purchase the snaplets for, a, for an additional fee of 2,000 uh, euros per year or euros or, pay, or US dollars uh, per year. But why really pay that much? Like what, what is really special about the user manager snapshot that we think it, it is worth uh, this money for you? And uh, so it, it is best to judge this relative to the alternative and to the alternative to the user manager snapshot is a DUI, a do-it-yourself approach. And this do-it-yourself approach is something that requires you and your team to build your own user management system. And in our assessment that the do-it-yourself approach is time-consuming, it's more expensive and more error-prone compared to the user manager snaplet. In contrast, the user manager snaplet is ready to use, it's ready-made and requires minimal uh, configuration and, and, and coding as we saw in, in Martin's demo. And it's, yeah, so it's ready to use in minutes and it's actually uh, at the end of the day, although it does require uh, uh, money to use the unlimited version, but at the end of the day, it actually saves time and money as well. And of course, they're very like the, 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 the limited version is also very suitable for many use cases and many applications. So there's even no need to pay this in many, uh, for many applications as well. To pay, there is no need to pay anything for many applications as well. 
So overall, the benefits of the user manager snaplet specifically, it's fourfold. It saves money, saves time, it enhances security and improves developer experience. And all of these are relative to the do-it-yourself approach. And in our opinion, at least that uh, it saves money in the sense that uh, for someone to do, or for a team to develop, to replicate all the functionalities of the user manager snaplet, they would require around 400 developer hours. And that would translate to something roughly equal, equivalent to 2,000, uh, 12, sorry, 12,000 US dollars or uh, euros. And the 400 developer hours, this is the amount of time that it took us to develop the functionalities of the user manager snaplet, or actually it took us even much more than that because the 400 developer hours is just the core functionalities without any experimentation, prototyping, without importantly adding integration tests, without uh, the time we have to spend for uh, adding things like accessibility and responsiveness and whatnot. That's just the core functionalities. Actually, it took us more maybe than 1,000 hours to, to develop it. So at least it would take 400 hours for someone to follow a do-it-yourself do approach. And this 12,000 number is based on an assumption, say, in a country like Germany, where the average developer salary hourly salary is 30 uh, euros per hour. So it's 30 times 400 equal uh, around 12,000 for a do-it-yourself approach. That is if someone would do it themselves. In contrast, uh, this is what I just said, the 400 developer hours is based on the amount of time that it took us and the 12,000 is based on a, a assumption of a $30 uh, per hour salary for a full-time developer in a country like Germany. In contrast to the do-it-yourself approach, the user manager snaplet, it's as we saw, it's ready to be deployed in minutes instead of having to spend 400 hours and it costs only $2,000 or euros per year instead of the $12,000 euros upfront investment required in, in the, in the do-it-yourself approach. And in addition to that, it's not just the initial investment, uh, of course, also Vaden provides the maintenance and there is the insurance assurance of the quality and Vaden support of on top of the uh, core functionalities. But money and time benefits aside, there are other benefits, enhanced security and improved developer experience. So it, in terms of enhanced security, the snaplets of course, follows best uh, security best practices, and they are reviewed, and they are tested and patched regularly by Vaden. So that in one that in one sense that enhances security as well, money and time aside. And in addition, as well, it improves the your experience and you know, the of and that of the of, of the whole team in that it allows you and your team to focus on developing your application's core functionality, while the snaplets are taking care of providing the user manager uh, management authentication and authorization functionalities. So that's all we have for the presentation. I can see there are many questions. Do you want, before I uh, go to the question, do you want to add something, Morten? Uh, no, no, uh, I, I saw a question uh, in there regarding the rest of the snaplets, but well, uh, as you can see, it takes a lot of time to explain just just one, and I just wanted to say that keep in touch, and we are going to start, uh, uh, of course, continue working on this, and you're going to see uh, more snaplets in, in the future. Um, yeah. Uh, so, so the, yeah, so the, the, those, I hope, answered many of the questions we had in the chat about whether there are, is there a free version or commercial versions, and again, so there are, both of them are there, and of course, we encourage you actually to start with a free version, try it out, and uh, and and see if it, it fits your needs, and then, of course, if you want to have the unlimited version, uh, that's also always an option. Uh, there was also, maybe also related to packaging and pricing, we can see there are a couple of other questions there's one there's one also question about whether this pricing is for compiling the application uh, with the user manager or for continuing running the application no it's for continuous running of the application so this is a runtime license that is uh, so a runtime license is required uh, when the application is running uh, in production and uh da, 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 the pricing okay then there are a couple of questions about how can we find more information and uh, how do we can start actually experimenting with it as i mentioned very soon there will be uh, a version that is like an alpha or a beta version even that's available for you to try out 
the official release will be in November. But for now, the alpha and beta versions are something uh, like we will we, are, we will announce maybe within a couple of weeks through social media and our blog post and so on the availability of these uh, of of this experimental uh, version. But the official version is targeted to be released uh, in November, and that will include, of course, a documentation page going through uh, all the steps. Uh, for example, that Martin has shown, and much more configuration options uh, as needed as well. Uh, there is also a question about the snaplets in general. So I, I think that, that maybe the title of the of the webinar has been misleading, and I apologize for that if someone thought uh, that it's on snaplets only in general, not on the user manager snaplets specifically. Uh, but we covered a bit the the concept of snaplets in general, and to my mind, if I would summarize it, I would say I would say that they all share in common the idea of being plug and play and full stack solutions to common uh, functionalities, common use cases. So again, plug and play, you just add a dependency and very minimal number of configurations, and then you, you are good uh, to go. And they are full stack in the sense that you have the UIs, the UI and the backend uh, and the business logic layer functionalities and the backend logic uh, all included out of the box. And of course, as Martin said, that also doesn't mean that you cannot customize these things as need be. Um, and other than the user manager snaplet, and that also relates to another question about asking uh, whether there is any automatic access logs in the user manager snaplet. I believe not, Martin, but... Uh, uh in fact, yes, we are using the standard uh, logging uh, mechanism that you can get when you create an application on startupbind.com and the user manager snaplet is logging in the correct uh, levels uh, all of the things that I've done in there. But the idea, part of that will be probably covered with a different snaplet if you want to have a better access to those logs. And by the way, Tarek, uh, there is a question uh, that I would like to answer. Uh, did you plan to develop a more fine-grained management rule systems like enable, disable, single functions, create, delete on a single route? This is something that you can already do, do because uh, we, what we are doing is basically extended, extending the view access checker. So, for example, you can use the rule to define the access to the view, and then in your code, you can ask if a given user contains or not contain a given role in order to handle those kinds of situations. Uh, as I showed you before, it is correctly uh, mixed with the facilities already provided by the framework. So you can right now do something like that. Yeah. And yeah, it's good that you clarify, I said actually uh, about the access logs. Yeah, that, that's true. I think I had in mind the idea about the act activity log snaplet and uh, and so that's also answered a couple of questions that we that came that about well, what other snaplets are we working on and one on the top of our list is the activity log uh, snaplet and uh, it 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 is it ties and it should integrate uh, and works out of the box with the user manager snaplet so that you can not just to get the logging but you you are, like you have also the ability to view it and 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 and. Uh, yeah, and, and, and to have like, uh, say, administrators or certain like uh, uh, stakeholders able to see these uh, logs in the UI as well. But uh, I believe, Martin, please correct me if I'm wrong, that also the idea is that we can include other things other than the snaplets. So of course, like it's not just activity logs from the snaplets, but from any other part of your application. Yes, right. that, that's the idea of the activity log uh, is to, to grab the stream, part of the stream of, your, of the log of your application, store it in the database and offer dynamic views so different actors of your system can have access to different parts of the logs for security reasons. So it is going to be a really interesting uh, snaplet that we are currently working on. And regarding the rest of the snaplets, a couple of more to, to mention. There are a lot. There are at least seven more that they are already in, in, in a pretty good uh, uh, status right now, but for example, one for handling 
handling the internationalization. So instead of having to deal with these messages, properties, files, you can store the uh, internationalization on the database so you can change it on runtime. Uh, so uh, you can, for example, create a new language and you don't, you don't need to deploy the application again. You can do it on the fly. And then there is another one for creating a menu, uh, but dynamically, instead of having to write it in the code, you can have it in the database. Uh, another one for handling the configuration of your application. There are a lot of things that you have to stay tuned and they will start to uh, appear. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, so, and you can imagine again, an administrator would handle the internationalization at runtime rather than the need for development team to be involved in editing some text when, uh, yeah, a typo say is discovered at runtime then so that that so to my mind at least that, that this is the one of the key benefits of the simplifications that the snaplets introduce it's not just the ui and and the existing logic which are there but importantly that this logic enables things to happen at runtime without freeing the development team from the need to uh, to be involved in every every the smallest customization uh, there uh what else? other questions uh, documentation and uh there is one final question perhaps uh, about the recording the recording on the slides will be available uh on youtube after uh, after the release and also you'll receive a copy of the recording and the slides i believe uh, via email uh within a couple of hours uh after after the webinar uh is completed as well uh sorry Tarek, to interrupt you but I, I saw also a question that was asked before that i would like to answer a technical question <clears throat> uh, is can the snaplet be used with spring data data mongo instead of jpa uh this is interesting this is an interesting question because all of the snaplets are uh, divided in several maybe modules with their contracts, these, these interfaces. So you can use uh, other implementations to support other technologies. Uh, so you don't need to do a huge change if you want to persist the information instead of persisting on a, a relational database to persist it on MongoDB. That should be possible just by implementing the data access layer so it's not too much. Yes, that's that's that question was on my list and I, I missed it. I apologize. Thanks for for noticing. All right, and uh, with that, I thank you all again for participating and for your questions and and feedback. It's much appreciated. And again, to emphasize uh, the, we will announce soon uh, the availability of at least uh, 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 an alpha or beta uh, version of the of the snaplets. And the actual the, the stable version is is scheduled for uh, for uh, November, and we are looking very much forward to for you to try it and give us your feedback and ideas about how you like to see this user manager snaplet to be developed, but also ideas for other snaplets as well. Thank you again, and see you in our in the next webinar.